Okay, a little bit more about affirmations today. I know this might feel like I'm really harping on something, but I have a reason for doing this. So now we've talked about how to build a proper affirmation. We've talked about the application of affirmations. We talked about adjusting the affirmations. Now I want us to discuss what we do when the affirmations that we've been speaking, like we get the actual result. So this is a little bit more than adjustment. This is now more like an elevation of the affirmation. And I want to talk about this in two different ways. So there's an elevation of the affirmation, which kind of rolls into like more the manifestation and creation aspect of things. And then there are some questions that you might have of, well, am I ever going to have to revisit these affirmations? So we're going to talk about both of those. So as you are beginning to then see, not just little itty bitty bits here and there and everywhere of, um, you know, fruits of the spirit or fruits of the affirmation, let's say, right? We're beginning to see some manifestation of said affirmations. You're going to start seeing big chunks. Like it's going to feel like, like when you're doing affirmations along with shadow work, um, along with just kind of going through this process of always taking an assessment and kind of self-actualizing and doing this like, like inward introspective work, um, you're going to find that huge chunks of things just fall away. And then all of a sudden life just begins to kind of bloom in this beautiful manner. So as that is occurring, okay, as that is happening, um, we want to also though realize that and then say, all right, so now I've gotten these big chunks of things out of the way. Now I'm starting to see maybe love show up in my life more. I'm starting to see the business flourish. I'm starting to get promotions. Um, I'm starting to maybe, maybe I'm getting like vehicles or whatever, you know, our area, our lives are showing abundance. Um, as that is occurring, then you're going to want to go to the next step. Okay. Which that next step is really then formulating these affirmations more as if they are more so manifestations. This is the evolution of the affirmation. You should not need to stay in this consistent affirmation state all the time. In other words, if you, while you're doing this for, you know, maybe a month or two or whatever, maybe three, four, five months, um, you should not need to be doing these affirmations, the same affirmation for like six, seven, eight months. This should not be a consistent thing that you're doing every day for the rest of your life. Okay. You should begin to see some growth. If you're not seeing growth, then I'm going to need to kind of go back to a few steps backwards and go back into meditation, into uh, shadow work, maybe work with a healer or some of some sort, right? Or, or a coach or a counselor, but in the spiritual realm, like if you go to a counselor, a lot the regular counselor, we'll talk about that. But anyway, um, to deal with these energetic issues, because there's something that's continuing to block, right? There's something that's continually stopping you from reaching new heights, from going through the evolutionary process. Affirmations are not something like, I don't have to say every day now, um, I love myself, I am lovable, right? I am loved. I don't have to say that because we kind of dealt with that and the depth of it, right? A while back, I, I don't have to say anymore, um, I trust my intuition or, um, I trust my compassion in myself or I am compassionate to myself and to others, or I don't have to, I trust my vision. My, I, I, I am of clear vision and of sound mind and of clear mind. I am of clear thought. I don't have to do that because we've worked on those basics. So this is, I don't want you to make affirmations end up making them a crutch because they should never be. Okay. You should see growth. 
and then you then they're evolutionary, right? They evolve into this manifestation, right? Where it's um it's more like um if you believe it and you speak it, you shall receive it, right? That kind of thing. Where it gets to the point where you're saying where like in the Bible, it talks about speaking to a mountain and the mountain moves or speaking to a fig tree and, and you could either speak life or death to a fig tree or that kind of thing, right? Where you're, you, they become creation statements rather than affirming something within that needs to change. I hope that makes sense to you because I don't think we talk about that enough. There is an evolutionary process and we shouldn't always stay kind of in this childlike state of, I need to do this in order to live. Now, you might need long-term shadow work. There might be things and traumas and situations that really require a lot of work. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But if that's the case, then I'm going to encourage you to go further than just manifestations and further than just meditations within yourself, like by yourself. And I'm going to encourage you to get some help like with this as you're maneuvering through it. All right. Now, the second thing um, people ask me a lot and I want to address is, are you ever going to have to revisit those affirmations from time to time? And the answer there is yes. Revisiting, not continually doing. So there are moments in time where as I'm going through my, my growth time or just living life, something will come up that will then be like, oh, wait, I recognize that energy, right? It's the energy of whatever. Um, so let's say self-sabotage. I realized in my late 40s into like my 50, year, 50 when I, by the time I turned 50, that I had literally been self-sabotaging. That the reason why I would get to a certain place and then never seem to get further, right? Maybe never get to like this C-suite, um, position in a company, in a corporate company, or didn't seem like I was able to buy a house, or whatever. It was because I was doing self-sabotage. I was literally waiting for the other shoe to drop. And, and I would do it in different ways. One of the ways I would do self-sabotage is, I talk about this a lot, that, you know, my dad taught me that if, you know, you're African-American, black, have a lot of melanin in your skin, that you have to work twice as hard to get half as much. So that's what I believed. And so I, that bore itself out in every area of my life until I realized that that belief was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I also then had this belief that because, you know, maybe I didn't have a, a college, a standardized college degree, or I didn't have this, that, that I was never going to get to those places and those spaces. So because of that, that became a self-fulfilling prophecy. I was self-sabotaging. So we did a lot of that work then, right? Took care of a lot of that. But I've noticed it every once in a while, it'll pop up back in my business now. You know, I'm I'm on the precipice of a huge shift. Like I'm shifting, I'm changing. And I'm just like, but this little sector, I've got to really kind of grind it out for a little bit. And I realized through talking to my coach that I didn't want to do the grind. And the reason why I didn't want to do the grind is because it seems like every time I do the grind, it doesn't necessarily work, right? I don't get those results. So I had to go back and do some affirmation. I had to go back and do a little bit more shadow work in that area. So just know that you probably will have to revisit these things. Only when you go to revisit them, it'll be much easier to go through the next time. That's all I have for today. Uh, we're, thank you so much for being here, following, sharing, subscribing, liking. Don't forget to leave me some comments. Did this help? Do you have any questions? What do you think? And I'd be more than happy to answer those. And don't forget to share this with someone that you truly love. Okay. And don't also don't forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. Talk to you soon.